Well, welcome to this year's 24 hours of reality, and we're gonna start in this first hour with the first of 24 reasons for hope. All around the world, we are witnessing a profound transition to clean, renewable sources of energy. More than ever before, people are freeing themselves from their dependence on costly and dirty fossil fuels, and they're beginning to use electricity that is both cheaper and cleaner to power their lives. The costs of wind energy and solar energy are plummeting, and at the same time, the cost of energy from dirty fossil fuels is going up. So we're truly at an inflection point, the beginning of a period of rapid and profound change that will transform the world's energy infrastructure. It's already happening, and it will move us further along our path towards sustainable electricity and a sustainable future. So let's get started with some of the facts. First of all, this is uh, an obvious conclusion when you look at what's happening around the world. And one of the, basis, uh, one of the bases for the change that's underway is the explosion in the installation of solar photovoltaic energy. That's the kind that turns sunlight directly into electricity. Now, if you look at this, we can remember a time not very many years ago when it just looked like solar energy was not making any progress and wasn't going to really make much of a difference. But then it started to creep upward, and now it's just shooting upward. Uh, now, this is the kind of technology revolution that we have learned to expect in areas like computers, and I'll show another example toward the end of this presentation. This is the production of solar photovoltaics country by country. Uh, the U.S., Germany, Japan, Taiwan, Malaysia, China is literally off the charts. They've been uh, making more than anybody else. And the rest of the world is really uh, moving forward. The U.S. has opened the world's largest fully operational photovoltaic uh, solar electric facility in uh, Arizona. So let's look also at wind power because that's the other of the big two sources of renewable electricity. In the United States, uh, at, at the end of last year, we had enough wind electricity being produced already to power the entire state of California and more. This is not uh, a minor matter. And on a global basis, the amount of energy from wind could supply the entire world's energy needs 40 times over. Now, uh, if you look at the present capacity that, and see how it's grown in the world uh, just since 1980, you see the same kind of pattern that we saw with photovoltaics. It seemed to be going nowhere and then it started edging up and now it is shooting upward. This is really encouraging and in some countries, we're already seeing uh, up to a, a third of the electricity coming just from wind power. Denmark's the world leader uh, in wind power, but it's grow almost a quarter in Portugal and it's growing uh, in other countries. Uh, to take a closer look at Denmark, which as I said has been the leader, in the first half of this year, they got 41% of their electricity from wind. And in, in January, 62%, another world record. Uh, in Germany, on one day this past spring, May 11th, Germany got 74% of all of its electricity from renewable uh, energy, both solar uh, and wind. And in the entire first half of this year, they, their average was more than 30% from renewables, and it's on the way up. Uh, in July of this year, 38% of Spain's electricity came from renewable energy. Again, this is no longer uh, the story of something that is playing a minor role. Now, in the U.S., it's true that the base coming from solar and wind uh, is still uh, low, but look at the trends. Coal has been going down uh, in the last 10 years by 20%. Natural gas has gone up uh, by a little more than 50%, it has started to come back down again as the costs have increased. But look at solar and wind, up more than 200% in 
just in the last uh, 10 years. And in three out of the last 12 months, 100% of all of the new electricity generating capacity in the U.S. came from solar and wind. This is the trend of the future and it is very exciting. Now it's useful to look back at what people thought was going to happen and how pessimistic the world's leading experts were about uh, solar and wind and then what really happened. Let's look at wind first. Uh, back in 1999, uh, the experts at the Department of Energy projected that the U.S. wind capacity would reach 10 gigawatts by 2010. Actually, we beat that goal uh, in four years early and exceeded it six times over by last year. Now let's look at the worldwide wind capacity that was projected only 14 years ago. Well, that projection actually was exceeded 10 times over. So this is a pattern that we're seeing with all of these uh, renewable projections. China was projected just 14 years ago to install this much uh, uh, wind uh, capacity, and actually they exceeded that goal 22 times over. And they're probably going to exceed it 75 times over uh, within just six years. So what about solar? The solar energy market was projected only 12 years ago to grow by one gigawatt uh, per year uh, by 2010. That goal was met and exceeded 17 times over. And last year, it was exceeded 39 times over. This year, we're on track to exceed that worldwide 55 times over. So they made a projection for global uh, uh, solar energy uh, production, and we are exceeding that 55 times over. So the question is, is there any precedent for this kind of rapid advance in new technology? Well, here's one. I mentioned computers earlier, but think about cell phones. Back when those first big clunky cell phones came in, AT&T, then called Ma Bell, said, uh, how many can we sell uh, by the year 2000? And they commissioned a big authoritative study, and uh, they learned they were likely to be able to sell all, almost a million of them. Well, they were a little bit wrong. The actual figure was over 100 million. And this year, what's happened? 6.3 billion cell phone connections. Well, <laughs> that was startling. And actually now there are a lot of people that are cutting the cords of their landline telephones and only using mobiles. But think about the difference between what they expected the future to be and how pessimistic they were and what actually happened. Why were they not only wrong, why were they way, way wrong? I've asked that question myself. I had one of those uh, big clunky uh, cell phones. And I think the reason why they were, not, they, they were way wrong uh, comes down to four things. The cost dropped way, way more quickly than any of the experts ever thought they would. Number two, even as the cost went down so quickly, the quality shot upward. A lot of the mobile phones now are literally supercomputers in your pocket, even as the cost uh, has gone down for the basic technology. Now, the third reason that they were way wrong is that the decisions to buy these new devices were not being made by big bureaucracies that were slow on their feet and hidebound. They were not being made by, by uh, uh, government agencies or utilities, they were being made by individuals. And individuals made the decision that they wanted the new technology. They could see that it was better. And the fourth reason, and this is maybe the most important of all, uh, I live in the United States and my neighbors and I often don't get in touch with the reality that is experienced by the majority of people in the world uh, who live in developing countries. And in those areas, they didn't even have any landline telephone uh, service to begin with. So when they had the opportunity to leapfrog to the new technology, they seized it right away and they were very excited by it. Well, these same things are happening with renewable energy. The, the time will come 
when people will look back and remember when they got their electricity from a big utility that burned coal and polluted the air and charged them an arm and a leg for the electricity uh, that they got. Because now we're seeing the, sh the rapid reduction in the cost of electricity uh, from wind. And actually, the, this, uh, this past year, the average price for electricity from wind in the United States uh, fell down to two and a half cents per kilowatt hour. That is only a fraction of what the average price for electricity is. It's the lowest cost that you can get. And look at what has been happening to the cost of the solar cells that produce photovoltaic energy. It has dropped incredibly and is still going down. Now, here's the thing. The more solar and wind energy we use, the cheaper it gets. Why is that? Because the basic fuel supply is free, the sunlight uh, and, and the wind, and when more people buy these technologies, then the companies that make it scale up and they find efficiencies in production and they bring down the cost not only of the cell itself, but the casing, the financing models, the distribution infrastructure, everything is going down in price. And the, again, the more of it we buy, the cheaper it gets. Now contrast that with what happens with coal uh, and oil. The more of that we use, the, the more expensive it gets. And we have all kinds of additional costs with the fossil fuels, the air pollution, of course, global warming, which we're focused on, uh, particularly uh, here this week and uh, next week as the United Nations uh, begins uh, its meeting. But what we're seeing around the world is tension in the places where the oil is produced and uh, sickness and problems in the places where the coal uh, is produced. Uh, and again, if we tried to buy more of that, that would simply drive the price up. Now, I mentioned the basic fuel. It's worth remembering, and you've heard this uh, just a few minutes ago. This is literally true. The amount of energy that comes to the earth from the sun every single hour exceeds the entire world's total energy consumption for an entire year. So we're not going to run out of it. Uh, and again, as the scientists and the engineers and the businessmen and businesswomen really put their minds to how to get the cost to come down further and further, more and more people are taking advantage of this wonderful opportunity to save money, reduce pollution, solve the global climate crisis, and power the economy. Now in the hours ahead, we're going to explore 23 other reasons for hope. But this first one is really worth thinking about because sometimes when we're confronted with a huge problem like global warming, the tendency is to want to push it away and not think about it. And when somebody says, oh, that we can't solve that anyway, some people are vulnerable to feeling that feeling of despair. But the facts show that feeling is wrong and completely out of date because what we have underway in the world now is this incredibly hopeful revolution that is making renewable, non-polluting wind energy and solar energy available to people all over the world. And for the first time, just in these last few years, we have seen the cost drop below the cost of electricity from the old, dirty, polluting sources. So that is an incredible cause for optimism. And as we confront the climate crisis, we need to avoid feeling that this is just a terribly depressing burden. Yes, it's a hard struggle, but we should feel a sense of joy that we have work to do that is going to make the future sustainable. And it begins with this transition 
toward renewable energy. And that is the first reason for hope that we are going to solve the climate crisis.